All right, so we continue on with a history walk, you might say, walk down memory lane with uh, Bodyboard International Magazine. If you missed it, part one was about my life with Maury Boogie. It'll keep it over there on uh, Facebook, Facebook Live, and you can watch it. I think it went uh, maybe 10, 20 minutes. And this one, we're going to talk about um, the years of uh, 1991 uh, 90, to uh, 1996 and the way it all started is historically because that's what we're doing here today is I uh, had gone off you know and like I said at the his the end of the uh, Maury Boogie days and with a band and then I ended up working at a graphics company and uh, they taught me in those days it was nothing like today you know where you uh, you know do graphics on discs and stuff like that you hand laid everything out and I learned how to what's called strip you know where you strip the text right into a line and this type of thing and so um, I uh, I got a little bit of training and so that was uh, 89 through uh, 91 that I worked there and in 1991, uh, Western uh, Publications decided that it was a recession, it was bad, and they decided to stop publishing Body Border magazine. Well, you know, that hurt a lot of people because that the mag was what some of the, the kids that were now professional writers, they were, you know, being sponsored and they had to get their, you know, picture on a cover or in the magazine on a, article or whatever and there was nothing nothing I remember the devastation and a couple people uh, Jay and Regina Minetti and Pat Cobble and a couple people called and said well you know you know graphics why don't you uh, start a publication and um, I saw I thought about it and hi uh, those of you Roger we were talking about you in the history one I didn't see your name on the last one, but uh, we were we were talking about you. So go watch it. <laughs> you won the first pro event. Remember that you got that little thing in your hat. You can carry for the rest of your life. Anyway, so um, so we come up to uh, No Magazine, 1991. It's a recession. Now I'm going to make a confession. I had no idea. Remember, I was a little miss. Tom taught me a little bit about sales, but I didn't know a whole lot about business in those days. And I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't know what a recession was. <laughs> I had no idea what that was. Okay, so now think about it. Western Boogie, I mean, uh, not Western Boogie, uh, Western Publications had just folded because of the recession they couldn't get people to advertise because nobody had any money and then people said well you need to do a magazine they had no clue what it means to do a magazine no clue well first of all you gotta have money you know and i was working at a graphics company and it's like come on so um so i uh said well let me think about it and so um I decided that I would call up all the people that were paying $4,000 for an ad at bodyboarding magazine and ask them if I gave you a full page ad in the first one, 1991, if I gave you a full page ad, this is Maury Boogie. Okay. Will you do it uh, $4,000 a page? Okay. So I collected about, I, I want to say 30,000, but it might have been around 15, because I remember it was a lot of money. But the deal was you had to give me the money to go print it because the printer wanted the money before they would give you the magazines. You see how it works? And so I had to have the money. Well, who has $30,000 sitting around their back pocket? So I went and collected all the money from all these little ads. I said, give me the money and you'll have a magazine. Well, the body boarders were stoked. I mean, they were, they were totally stoked. So we now have a magazine. So I called, um, let's look at the mass head here. The mass head was the people that were the um, people that worked. Okay, so we had, um, uh, if you have this first one, uh, you'll see that the publisher was George Abu Hamid. He was the owner of Wave Rebel. 
he was very instrumental in giving me the uh, the uh, back the money for the back page see that was wave rebel that was how that got done I mean this this was cash you know we had to you know you all these people that are their businesses are folding right now in this epidemic pa pandemic cash really is a good thing okay when you're trying to start a business so he helped out so we have a uh, editorial director Pat Caldwell see Pat one Pat was right this was his heyday he needed you know he needed covers and when I show you some of these magazines he made it to some of the covers and he didn't make it because we said Pat Caldwell I'll tell you how he got on the cover we had a little committee that picked the cover shots and I'll tell you about that in a minute um, let's see um, editorial production Carlota Chadwell okay uh, senior editors Debbie Caldwell uh, Jordan Finkelstein and Jay real Jay real was one of the editors of the first BIM and um, ah, I don't know if you know a lot of these are writers a lot of writers Linda Marks was a writer John Marks was a writer he Sasaki was in France at the time he was he gave us some French articles and um, uh, photographers let's see if you remember any of these people Todd Anderson Tom Boyle Hank you know uh, K Ray Halgren Russell Hoover remember him he was considered one of the best I was so excited to get Russell Hoover photos and Hank in my first little issue and uh, Scott Weiner and so here we launched the first one and you know when you look at it it was um, it was pretty rudimentary BZ had the centerfold you know and um, Pat helped me with uh, getting some of the um, uh, uh, stories Tom Boyle who's someone you've probably heard of in the boogie world is a great photographer did uh, some photos of uh, Jackie Booter do you remember him Jackie Booter I wish I could put these up on the screen but uh, we're just gonna go random through some of the magazine Jackie Booter was probably one it considered one of the best drop me writers and um, had to compete with prone writers too by the way um, we had asked the manufacturer JP Patterson did a great uh, article on the manufacturer there uh, well it's it's there you don't Tom Dito Quino uh, did an article on going pro uh, I hope Tom listens to this later because I still see him popping up on things um, and thank you all for joining me here hi Chris uh, here was wave rebels team look at this okay so we have um, okay see if you can name these people this is what this was a uh, 1991 wave rebels team okay so we've got um, Pat Cowell of course there's Chris Burkhart who is also known as Burks right uh, that's uh, Jack Lindholm Jackie Booter and who did I miss kind of a gee ah, I mean these guys are all still legendary I mean is that crazy so that's 1991 that's um, 91 what is that uh, in 20 that's 20 and 9 that's 29 years ago and you still hear these names in the sport is that not crazy that is so awesome now I always wanted to have a um, uh, I mean people would take these little clippings of their events to their sponsors so we always had a results page okay that was part of the first issue I insisted on having a results page and with pictures aha look at Brian press right there the one we 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 didn't know if that was a girl or a guy we made fun of him on that one he had his long hair up in a ponytail um, and uh, oh and then um, uh, oh, uh, the other thing was I insisted on every magazine have the girls. Chris, you'll be happy about that. Almost every article had, every issue had a, a, a story about the girls. And not girls in bikinis sitting on the beach, but girls ripping. That was another one of the things I wanted. I insisted on. Uh, we had a people, a people, you know, people of the sport. That was Mary Barsvani, and some of you might remember her. She was one of the top 
promoters with me and Maury Boogie, and then she went on to work with uh, Mary Lee Christensen. Yeah, so this was the first issue, but I wanted to show you something that was in every issue that was one of the most popular features. And um, it came from an idea that um, of mine. Oh, Tony Prince will be, uh, Tony Prince and Joe Evans will um, be stoked to see this. This was the article on the other solar eclipse. They went up, two bodyboarders went up to do the solar eclipse. Or went down, I should say. They went. They went over to um, uh, where was it? This was uh, not the one that was just recent. But here, how, how's this sound? The recent one that was a couple of years ago. They both went to see that solar eclipse. I believe up in Idaho. <clears throat> but they had done this original one with the boogie boards. Oh, it was at. Um, they went and saw it down in Mexico somewhere. But anyway, isn't that amazing? Tony got captured it. Tony was still a, a, just an incredible photographer back then. But I want to show you um, a couple things that um, were in every issue was, uh, did I put it not on the first one? Okay, the results had to be in every issue. Girls had to be in every issue. A people story had to be in every issue. And what's happening? And everyone would call me and go, well, who's going to be in what's happening this month, you know, or this issue? So we always wanted to find out what's happening with so and so. It was like such a cool one. This look how rudimentary this first one was. Just a picture sitting there with some some text. It was it was rough. The first issue was rough, but we got it to the masses in a record eight weeks. So nothing was lost between losing Bodyboard Magazine and then coming out with BIM. So Maury Boogie uh, at the time now was owned by whammo or somebody you know bought the first inside spread and um, I was so happy that I was able to sell that well I called her up and I said so what do you think of the mag and now remember this was up against bodyboarding mags <laughs> and it was only like oh maybe 30 pages compared to like 60 so um, I was proud of it I really was but she says well you know it's a little rough but I'm sure it's gonna get better and she had a very good attitude about it so I went okay it's gonna get better so um, we took this one and uh, it was just um, if you look at the pictures on the cover we didn't want to feature anybody but we wanted everybody to uh, be on it and it was Kainoa that's Mike in the middle there and the, the Wave Rebel team and you know we just wanted a, a kind of a collage of a bunch of different people on the first one so I am so excited that I have one copy of the first one you know and it was like yeah um, now now we go into the second one we're starting to think we're a little bit we're kind of like you know we're we think we're doing good you know <laughs> I don't know how to explain that but um, look at the look at the the bodyboard international now. So I was told by the distributor that um, uh, you got to have what it is a big like you know gardening or whatever it is on the newsstand because that one I had had such a little font. You know, I mean, look at the difference. You know, that was that, look at the difference of those fonts that how that red and white pop out. That was all from getting on the newsstands the second one made it to the newsstands and that was what the distributor said you have to have it pop off the newsstands so we put um, Jackie Booter looks like Kainoa and Jay Real on the on the second issue the holiday issue and that's all three of them there R green and red for the holiday issue a little rudimentary but you know we were just learning about how to do a magazine and Maury Boogie came back and ran the center again. BZ ran a big ad. So now we're going, okay, we got a magazine. We're doing good, you know. And um, uh, the mass head still was the same. Um, we have Pat Caldwell helping me with the editorial. And um, Brian Bielman now comes into the second one. Do you know who Brian Bielman is? I mean, just an amazing photographer. He found out that Hank was submitting photos and one of the things that I did different 
because I heard some of the magazines, surfing magazines, would take a photo for the cover and then hold that photographer out for about three months before they paid him. So I said, okay, if I'm going to get good covers, I'm going to need to pay $300 for the shot. I'll never forget this. And I'm going to pay him right up front before it even goes to the print so I can keep getting all these good shots. Pretty smart, huh? So we always had some really good cover shots, I think. Anyway, so uh, Brian Bilden came on board. Uh, Hank's still there. Chris Dybald, do you remember him as a surf photographer? He came on board, second issue, 1991. And uh, John Kepler was really good. Michael Paz, I don't know if any of you remember him as a photographer. Scott Weiner, great photographer. And Woody Woodruff. Woodruff. I mean, Wood, Woodruff. Worth. Ah. Yeah, we had some good photographers. And we were the body bearing magazine at all, remember, in those days. There was no other magazine. So I was really excited. But one of the things that we incorporated in the second issue that was in every issue after that, which was a couple things the shaping table, which was all about shaping boards. And um, we also had um, one that uh, um, I like to feature Drop Me because Drop Me didn't get a whole lot of exposure. So I would always put a lot of Drop Me writers in there. And I'll tell you, when we get into the BIA on the next part of the series, I'll tell you what happened with the Drop Me writers and me. But anyway, um, this was the most popular section of all sections of the uh, magazine. And I've lost the chat room here. Let me see. Oh, yeah, the All-Star. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Uh, KIA question answer was so little back then. I don't know what that means, KIA. That was pretty awesome. There was enough of the bikini. Oh, yes. Yeah, so okay, these are the conversations. But it's not showing the, the chat room as I'm talking. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Th these are legendary. Um, these were legendary uh, photographers. We were stoked to get them. But remember, it was all about the money. Because I knew if I was going to get good photographers, I had to pay. Because these poor guys were left out for months sometimes from these magazines. So that's why we, we that was one thing I insisted on. But this was the, um, this was the two pages, sometimes one, in every issue that um, was the most popular. And see if you were ever in it. The postcards. The postcards. And what it was, my theory was... If a person got their picture in the magazine, they would go back to school and say, I'm in the magazine. And they did. And everyone would ask me every time, who's in postcards? Well, you got to send them in. All right. So um, there's even Brian Press that one in. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, Writer Justin Wesseling just going, you know, prone in a little wave, probably in Carlsbad there, you know. But these weren't the greatest shots, but some of them were pretty good. But it was just someone that wanted to be in the magazine. And I felt like this is what we have to do. We have to feature, you know, uh, everybody. Remember, this was a bodyboarding magazine made by bodyboarders, okay. And so that, you know. And this little, uh, I, I remember this little sketch came in in postcards, and the, and the little kid writes, please write back. <laughs> that little uh, little cartoon there. That was so cute. Yeah, that, 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 that was one of the most popular sections. Sometimes people went right to postcards just to see if they were in the, um, you know, they were in it. And here's a, a calendar we put on the center spread, and the second one, Pat Caldwell. Beautiful shot. Let's see who shot that. Scott Weiner. He had a lot of shots of a lot of people. That was the centerfold. So uh, that's that was number two. Again, I always had all the contests. Now there's a lot of contests. But, you know, these people were getting paid for this. You know, the contest section. They would go and, you know, take that back to their sponsors and say, hey, look, I won and I was in the mag. Remember, for those of you that aren't, um, 
you know, don't remember these days, this was the only place you could go to get, you know, sponsorship money. Uh, <laughs> yeah, now they just post their pictures on Instagram. Back in the early 90s, I used to pick up Bodyboard Magazine at the local supermarket here in DE. Miss it. Uh, BIM was a special time before the internet and social media. Absolutely. Read this magazine front to back when they got them. Yep. Here's Pat's cutie. Oh my gosh, she is still putting it in the rail. I know. So this was uh, this was number two, and now we kind of felt like, you know, we got some really good uh, writers. We had health tips, um, the Maury Boogie uh, National Championships. You know, just you could see there was just really a, it was a, a special time in the sport. It really was. So as we move along. Uh, I do. I know that Jordan wants to uh, show the BIA All Stars, but here are all the. Um, remember, I just found these today. I went and looked and searched. These are all the um, rag mags. They're all. Uh, they're called Hardcore Body Border, and I published them for people that didn't compete. You know, the ones that really needed pictures, but they didn't compete, and um, they were free. And you'd find a stack of them at the surf shop. And um, we try to get some good shots. And I don't think I paid as much for a cover. I can't remember. I think a photographer would get like a hundred bucks for a cover on this one. But it was, they, they were popular. And then we started inserting them in BIM in the middle. So it was like pretty cool. Um, Back then, to get sponsored, we used to have a nice resume, pictures, and we had to hire people with the big lenses like Tyler Moriarty. I know. Yep. It was a different day. Okay, so I'm going to go through a stack here, and we'll just open it up to any questions. I know Jordan said something about the BIA, but here's um, first year. Always a real, um, you know, uh, good photography. And also we made sure that the centerfold was really good. That's Danny Kim standing up. He was known at the time as a stand-up writer. Probably well known for that. You know, if you talk to anybody in the history of the sport, they'll remember Danny Kim was just good, just rock. We had uh, cartoons. You know, it's it was... It was the heart of bodyboarding, you might say. There was always um, a um, there was always what's happening with, and there was always a postcards. You see all the people that sent in, and they were in black and white, and they were usually just a photo that they mailed to me, and that was in every single issue. And believe it or not, probably the most popular magazine uh, that we did. And, oh, I'd love to just read some of these articles today. <laughs> Look at that Barbados. Wow. Yeah, i got to get in here and read some of these. Uh, Chris Burkhart, this one was kind of a fascinating shot because his hair was kind of going, you remember he had long hair on the top and his hair was kind of going in a different direction. Then, uh, then we went out to Slitterbaum. My first trip to Texas and a wave park was at Slitterbaum. Some of you have heard about it. It's a wave park out there um, right in the middle of Texas. And that's Pat Caldwell riding it. And of course he had to make the cover. I mean, look at that shot. Where, where do you get a tube like that with a tree in the background? And as you can see, now we're going by BIM. Remember like what I said, when people know, like they would go, when is the latest BIM coming out? Tom, we talked about you in the first part of the history. I forget what we talked about, but you, I hope your ears were itching. Um, so there was a whole article on um, uh, Brian Bielman, who is just the most amazing photographer. Uh, there was a story on him. Graphics were starting to get a little bit smoother, and we were still doing uh, layouts. It wasn't on a disc yet. But um, we did a whole uh, article on shore break. 
you know, shore breaks. And it was just, it was just a fun, if you're a bodyboarder, you know, it was, it was just a fun magazine. And, um, you know, what's happening with Ivan Okuda. Do you guys remember him? Ivan Okuda. We always did a, what's happening with somebody that people wanted to know more about. So, um, let me tell you a little bit about how these cover shots got picked. Um, every month at the uh, BIM office in Oceanside, California, Pat Caldwell, Jay Real, Regina Minetti, uh, Kirk Blackburn, Georgie Marino, Debbie Caldwell, and myself would get together and put the carousel down with all the slides, okay, you probably, some of you youngsters probably don't even know what a slide looks like, but these were slides, and we would put them on the light board and check them out through a loop, what was called a loop, and we would look at it, and if it looked like it was worthy of the magazine, we would put it in the slide. So by the time everybody got there, Pat Caldwell, Jay, and everybody, we would have the carousel full, and when they would get here, we would start you know, going through the carousel and picking, picking the uh, photos for the cover. And that is how the cover got picked. And if you were Jay Real or Pat Caldwell and your shot was worthy of a cover, it didn't matter because it was not political or anything like that. Your, your photo was worthy of a cover. And I think when we went to Slitterbomb and did that event, the whole issues about Slitterbomb, Pat Caldwell was worthy of a cover. <laughs> You know, even though he was on the editorial. Um, this particular writer, a local Huntington Beach guy, Robbie Crawford, ripped, uh, won the, the BIM meeting that night of, of a cover shot. You know, so now we're looking at all cover shots that were picked by the, by the crew. Here's uh, Ben Severson, picked by the crew. And this particular one, uh, we're starting to get a little bit thicker, a few more advertisers, and um, industry news, and uh, where can I buy a body board, something about the shops. Oh, uh, we did a, a thing on um, where can I, uh, Turbo, remember Turbo in Hawaii, whoops, right there. And postcards once again in every issue and people sent it in and they're they're all usually in black and white and people would go there and look for their pictures new york uh west side big island irvine california and puerto escondido see they they came from all over the place it's cool totally cool uh what were the means championship in the 70s what what were the means championships what does means mean uh will you were everyone's first exposure to jacob reeves phil harder da, 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 da. they later became the stars of some of the best bodyboard videos ever made like revolution yes okay we're going to get into that here in a minute we're moving up into that not to mention uh jacob Inventing the ARF, Jacob Reeve was amazing. Yes, he was. Um, okay, I don't know, uh, uh, Alexandra, Al Alexandro, what were the means championship in the 70s? Maybe you could explain what that means, means. Okay. Hi, Bob. All right, so we're moving down, down the line in the history of um, the sport via, now we're going via BIM magazine, hoping that some of your, these names will show up. And on the cover, um, on the cover was, um, let's see. Uh, da, 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 uh, let me just see here. Usually we would put, um, okay, Tony Boy Tarpley, 23-year-old first Year pro from Wahiwa, Hawaii, loving the beauty of this west side Oahu wave. All right, so we wanted to do something a little bit different. 
and here's what we did. We put a wave, uh, a rider with a helmet on, something a little bit different than um, anyone was used to. <laughs> and that was something that was picked by the crew, the BIM, the BIM crew we used to call them. How to do a wipeout, bad at work. Uh, let's see if there's anything else. You, you know, you know, postcards, same issue. I, I, um, I want to get down to the um, All Star one that Jordan wants to talk about because this is when everything started, um, really uh, hitting. Jackie Jackie Booter was one of the early '90s stars. I don't know if you've heard his name. He 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 ripped on um, Me. He really did, and he he, he started getting. Uh, winning some events even in the prone division uh who were the main championships in the 70s what were the main oh main championships um you know what um i just did the 70s podcast i mean i just did the video the one before this and they were i mentioned that in there but um we're in the 90s now but if you want to go watch that other one there are some mentions of that Okay, so postcards once again. Uh, we've got Huntington Beach, Virginia Beach, Puerto Rico, Aliso, California. I love I love showing those because that was what really kept the magazine going. Believe it or not, I know you think you bought it because you wanted to see Jackie Booter or Pat Howell, or but it was that that postcards and this. I mean, you're getting a little magazine 101 here. Was the contest page? Look at that. We had to squeeze those. We had to squeeze those in. Um, oh, don't be sorry. I mean, just I, you know, I'm trying to get through the '90s now, but we did talk about the '70s earlier. Um, so um, yeah, so now we're getting into like uh, some of these uh, '90s people, and we're gonna go. I'm gonna show you um, pipeline. And again, at this point now. Uh, Bodyboard International Magazine has become BIM. Everyone was calling it BIM. Probably one of the thickest issues uh, was uh, this one with... Um, uh, ah, I'm drawing a blank on that writer uh, on the cover. Robbie Gall. Really, really another really impressive um, drop knee writer in the day. And... Um, a lot of these guys were giving Kainoa, you know, a run for their money. Uh, Jordan, uh, some here, but try to get out when Jackie Booter was awesome. First board wave rebel. That's right. Um, and then uh, Team Madrid, you know, do you remember the Madrids? George D. Marino was the national uh, champion and in, in, in NSSA champion. Um, of course, the BIA now. Um, uh, this is a year um, four, so we're now into 94, and we are well into the BIA. And the next, my next uh, video will be on the BIA. But uh, I do want to show you some of the BIA All Stars in this video. But the, I started posting all the BIA championships. Now, BIA was Bodyboarder International Association, and BIM was Bodyboarder International Magazine. So do you think there was a connection? Yes, there was. And can you, anyone figure out why there was a connection? Um, well, it's because um, now a couple other magazines have hit the scene. Uh, I want to see if I can remember them. Pit and maybe Riptide. And I was putting on uh, uh, the uh, BIA. So if if I'm putting on the BIA, wouldn't I want my magazine to be uh, BIM being given out as gifts and stuff like that or prizes or free at the event? Yes. So BIM and BIA were kind of like, they say in Spanish, juntos. We were together. BIM published all the BIA anything. Um, all right, so uh, now we go back to the Wave Park, and this whole issue is on Wave Parks. And uh, Vista opened up a Wave Park. I don't know if any of you remember that. 
and they were riding out there and we were doing events out there flow rider and look who ends up on the cover Jay real drop me at Schlitterbaum if you have you ever ridden Schlitterbaum do you know about Schlitterbaum oh my gosh I have so many stories about Schlitterbaum because I was putting those events on I tried to jump on that wave I tried to jump on that wave that Jay was on right there <laughs> and the owner saw me getting ready to you know hop on and like Chris Tenberg and all these people are just riding it and he came down he runs down and he goes I don't think that's a good idea that you uh, get on that wave and I go why and he goes well uh, it's pretty gnarly but we're having this private party tonight and we'll crank it back down a little bit and I'll let you ride it tonight at the private party I went oh okay I'll do it then so anyway I go to the private party and all the pros were there and Epo uh, if those of you know Epo from Australia was there and I'll never forget this as long as I live he said Patty I would not suggest you jumping on that wave right there but why don't you get on my back and I'll ride that other wave to show you what it feels like and then you can kind of get okay <laughs> So he gets in the water. I jump in the water. I clump onto him. We take off on this wave, and I'm not exaggerating. This thing's going on, turning all over the place. Next thing I know, it spits us out. It throws us into this little thing that's like circular, like a toilet, and you come out. <laughs> and that was my ride at the Schlitterbaum. <laughs> I'll never forget Epo for that. He was such a wonderful human being to let this old lady experience the slitter bomb <laughs> but now we're at um now we're um now everybody we are um turning like the little hcv the little the rag part the little uh, newsprint part now got turned into a whole section on the bia and all the the, the people that were making money from their sponsors could now clip away. You got pictures, you got your sponsors all, you know, showing up and all over your wetsuits and your boards and stuff. And so the BIA now is um, uh, in the mag a lot because BIM, remember, BIA, BIM. And here's postcards. People are still sending in postcards. For those that have been with me this whole time, uh, yeah, we're still doing postcards. Okay, and um, I'm getting there, Jordan, on the on the All Stars. Let's see, let's see. Uh, oh man, oh here we go. Okay, so now we decided. Uh, if you notice that we went, uh, the magazine went from this um, BIM, uh, real big B I M. Uh, logo up on the top no word of bodyboard international magazine except it wrapped around you know they're wrapped around the whole thing and now this is like kind of like when you know you've kind of arrived and we hadn't arrived but we were really remember the only magazine kind of out there for a while was now we went to a global BIM international and that was the uh, the uh, stickers look like that the t-shirts look like that the hoodies look like that everything had that global little grid with BIM in it and that was where we ended up all right Brian Weiss featured in this magazine this issue Do you guys remember him whole article on Brian Weiss um, really unbelievable writer um, all right, so this is, was my idea. Don't know if it was a good one, but it was my idea. And I wanted at this point of the, uh, um, what would you say? This, at this point of the sport, remember, I was in it since 75-ish, 76-ish. And now we're looking at 90. We've been in it 20 years now. And we were starting to get some ambassadors, you know, that were kind of like, uh, for example, um, Jay came out as one of the spokesmen for, you know, the sport and um, oh, uh, Pat Caldwell, a lot of spokespeople. 
But I thought if there were people that are going to walk on this earth and tell the gospel of bodyboarding, had to show up as good writers, good students, good speakers, a good ambassador, good, 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 good. Didn't have to be excellent, but just good. You know, good at a whole bunch of different things. And we were going to start an all-star team that had little cards like baseball cards. And the all-stars were going to move through the bodyboarding world as ambassadors. And they were called the BIA All-Stars. But you couldn't just be one. You had to win some stuff. You know, you had to be part of, you know, uh, the whole competition thing and all that. So here we have it. And uh, I will just kind of like put it up there and you can, I'll start with this side. I wish these were up on my back screen there, but like I said, this was kind of impromptu. All right. So there you go. There's Jacob Reeve in the middle there. Um, Mike Lee, who still we still talk about. Jen Miskoff. Um, let me turn this around and see some of the names you might recognize out of this. But like I said, these were all ambassadors, and they got a lot of accolades from their sponsors. There's nothing like that in the sport today. Nothing like this. Nothing, nothing, nothing did the job that the All-Stars did. You know, we had Phil Harnsberger, who was up and coming with Jacob Reeve. Brian Peterson, do you remember him out of the uh, Santa Barbara era? Eric, Eric um, Eliason, also out of Santa Barbara era. John McKinney, uh, Heath Cochran, I don't know if you remember him. He was a DJ. Uh, Nathan Statler, Mike Lee, Joe Miskoff, Mike Jordan, uh, Robbie Fabry, J.R. Seinold, Regina Minetti, Justin Hill, and uh, um, Brian Barker, and Jill Stubbs. And we had captains of each area. So Jill Stubbs was the captain of the North Santa Barbara area. Heath uh, Cochran was... Um, uh, uh, no, he's Coltrane. Coltrane, I'm sorry. He's Huntington Beach captain. And um, Brian Barker was the Cardiff South, you know, captain. So we're going to go into that when we talk about the BIA and the difference between the BIA and the events that are run today. There was some things that were done a little bit different that made it one of the most popular events of all time and why people wanted it to come back. And it can come back if there is a resurgence of bodyboarding. Okay, so there you have it. A little history of um, B BIM, BIM, Bodyboard International Magazine, the HCB Hardcore Bodyboarder, and the BIA All-Stars. And I'm gonna do another one, another uh, video here on just the BIA. So you can uh, tune in. That would be part three. But does anyone want to call in? Do you have any questions about this era? Uh, the 1991 to 96 ish era? Do you have any uh, questions that I might be able to answer? Or do you want me to look up anybody in one of the mags? Or do you have uh, just something that's kind of brewing that you'd like to know? You're welcome to call. 760-231-1235. I couldn't get anyone to call in the history. I don't know. You guys are like, you know, I thought you were more, you know, when, when Scotty Carter called in the last time, him and I ended up doing an hour and 15 minute podcast. It was crazy. <laughs> just da -da -da -da, remember this and remember that. And we were just like talking about everything. But um, what I like to do for those of the young people uh, coming up in uh, the world of bodyboarding, I would love to uh, do a BIA podcast now. And um, Mike Lee rules. He just as funny as heck. Good friend. Glad I met him at the BIAs a long time ago. Yes, he is. Um, uh, John that massive Tahiti he surfed, who was he with Jordan? Uh, that massive Tahiti he surfed, who was he with? Okay, Jordan probably can answer that one. Um,
what was this? I remember when BW did his first pro contest in IB, Bud Tour, did really good, but got Stuart a little irritated. I remember that one. I remember that event, yeah. <laughs> Brian Weiss, BW, who's, he's also called, he had a, he could do that. <laughs> yeah, I remember that too. Yeah, you don't want to, um, you don't want to, um, you know, and the, Brian didn't care, he, you know. But anyway, so I'm going to, because uh, I don't want these to be too long, but that's a little bit about Bodyboard International Magazine. Oh, and then um, let me just tell you um, the uh, end, uh, when, when it ended, again, if you remember my five year, I talked about in the first part about the history. Uh, the second part ended in five years too. Uh, I, I am a, what's called a multipotentialite. And we have, uh, it's not a bad thing, it's just kind of a character type, but we have a, a five-year attention span. So I'll go along and do all these things. Then five years, I kind of get bored want to do something else. So that's what happened with Maury Boogie and me, which you'd think, who would quit a job like that? And that's what happened with Bim. So uh, the fifth anniversary, my, my last issue, five years, of course, my good friend, uh, Galerme Tomega, uh, had to be on the cover, uh, but it was still picked because you look at that wave, and I don't know why I picked those colors. I don't think it was probably my best cover, but it was definitely a good wave. And um, at that point, Glaramy was, look at this, he was two-time world champion, and he went on to be six-time world champion and one of the most delightful people in the sport that I know and will uh, treasure uh, his friendship forever. So, um, all right, so I will leave you there with a, a little bit of Bodyboard International Magazine unless you have any questions. And I'm going to start up a um, um, podcast on the BIA. So if you're interested in how the BIA was different in the sports, I'm gonna give you some of my personal feelings on competing. So uh, if you can't watch it now, uh, be sure and tune in um, uh, or just watch it later, okay? So thanks you all for joining me and I'm gonna start another video and cover just the BIA.